Now we're going to actually install the web server and the PHP and MySQL, of course, on the Windows platform. Now you can get this all started on Windows, but you can also use Microsoft Internet Information Server, IIS. I happen to be on Windows XP at the moment. Maybe you are too. It's up to what you need. Windows 2003 Server is great to work with. IIS, PHP, even Apache. And lots of people still use Apache though, even on the Windows platform, and I do recommend that. See the software you need video for much more information. But there is a very, very easy way to get started on your development machine. If you're working externally on a remote server, on a professional hosting service, for example, or you have a professional web server, it doesn't matter if it's Linux or what have you, you can actually work and develop locally on a Windows machine. And I'll show you how to do that. Now the IIS install, it can get a little bit tricky. You can download PHP from php.net. You can download MySQL, the latest version from mysql.com. And you can also get the Apache server from apache.org or just use IIS. It's up to you. Those installs can be pretty straightforward, but then some configuration settings need to be taken care of. So you have to really, really watch out there. And I just would recommend you using something called WAMP server. And I give you the URL in the software you need video. So you want to take a peek at that if you need to grab the direct URL to get this. Now I just have it here in the directory structure that you see for the website. Not a big deal. What we're going to do is just double click on the version that we have here. This is the 5.1.43. From the website, you also want to download the add-on as well. And I also have the installers here. This is just from php.net. This is going to be what you're going to actually download if you just want to install PHP into IIS, for example. But I'll leave that up to you. It has a few security issues when dealing with just the CGI version. There are different ways to install it, and I find this is the easiest way. It's using WAMP server. It puts everything together for you as you're going to see. Okay, the first thing we can do is pick and select the agreement that we have here. You see we have Apache 1.3.33. This is actually a very mission critical web server. You can use two if you'd like, but that doesn't come with this particular module. I use 1.3.33 and that's local. And I also use 2.0. You can have them both installed on the same machine. So it doesn't matter if you install it through this WAMP server. Everything's going to be separate. So you can still install other Apache servers locally. You can even install other MySQL instances local. It just uses a different directory structure, which I'm going to show you. And of course, PHP 5.03, the add-on module is going to allow you to have the 4.3 version and above, 4.3.1 or above. And so that means you can have both versions and switch really easily. I'll show you how to do that. We'll also set up PHP My Admin, and we'll do that later. With this overall package, you just want to keep up to date so you can download the additional package when it becomes available and this is going to update different versions of the software. So you can see that you're basically looking at something that's going to save you a lot of time and effort. And it's really easy. You're going to really like this. You can use the default folder here if you like. I'm going to use something on my hard disk in my program files folder. I create a separate one here, underscore files, just so I don't have any spaces in between. And then you can just pick WAMP, as you see here. You need about 60 megabytes. It could increase, of course. And it already exists. It's empty, but we will use that. We'll just use the default here for the shortcuts. And we will automatically launch on startup. Not a big deal. This is definitely something you want to work with. These are all going to be services that are installed automatically on your machine, and you can manage them with ease with WAMP. It'll take a little bit of time to actually get everything to install correctly, and it's really great to do this. You're going to like it. Now we pick the www folder, and incidentally, this is where your files can go 
if you don't want to set up an external directory structure, I recommend the external directory structure, but you can just put them in there. But chances are you're going to want to put something else in the default or just leave it alone. Maybe some sort of local admin screens for yourself. Now we're going to find the default browser. We can go to our program files folder and find the Mozilla Firefox. And then we can select that with the exe. That'll be our default browser, but as you wish. Just takes a little bit to get that to work. Now you can also install the add-on, the 4.3.1 add-on. It works very similarly. It knows where to place that there. It knows how to work with that. It's smart enough to know that. It's going to be another 17 and a half megabytes. The other screen, we can actually just turn that off. The launch WAMP now and we'll hit finish. Now this one already popped up in the meantime and we can launch WAMP now. You'll see some things in your shortcut. You can have an uninstall. You might have to go to the directory where you installed it in order to uninstall it. There's a file there called uninstall and there's documentation as well. Now what you'll have is below here, you're going to see this little odometer down here and it might change. There's different status signs that you can take a peek at. And from there, you're going to have to change your configuration file. As you can see here, you also have the PHP any file and your WAMP any file. You can use PHP my admin. You can also switch to PHP four or vice versa. You can adjust your Apache servers as you see fit. You can also see MySQL and you can see that you can install additional services from there and start and restart or stop all the services. You may need to restart all the services if you want to. So this is how you can install it. It's very, very nice to do this. We'll look at how to set up the configuration file as well. And we'll also look more into working with MySQL and the PHP My Admin and other features of this. So it's right there in your system tray and it's open source. All of this is open source and really robust. And I encourage you to actually use this and this is going to help you follow along really with ease.